Hi everyone, welcome to a, a geography YouTube channel with me, Mr. Cool. Sorry I haven't posted for a couple of months, but I worked really hard on the, those like first ten, and I think I like, burned out a little bit. Um, but don't worry, I'll be kind of coming back with uh, a few more. This one's really just for my year 11s, just for their um, paper one mock, which is coming up in about a, a week or two's time. I'm not exactly sure of your timetable, but just to kind of let you know exactly what kind of things are going to be coming up on the test. So there's a whole range of things, but it's based off the first paper. So that means the natural um, the natural or physical process, geographical processes that we studied so far. And we're almost, almost done with um, all the content that we need to go through. So this is going to be a really good test of um, exactly what a whole of a paper one looks um, exactly like. So just what's going to kind of come up in the exam for you guys who might be a bit concerned. Um, first off, let's go through the main topics. So tectonic hazards, I'm just going to put a TH. Uh, weather. Uh, rivers, coasts, uh, cold environments, I'm just going to put CE, I can't be bothered to write it, and then tropical rainforests um, and ecosystems. Okay, and I'll just put ecosystems there. All of those are topics that are in your uh, GCP revision guide as well, and we've given you um, a really, really good revision guide as well, one that we make um, ourselves, well, Mr. Sturman made most of it, to be honest, um, that would be really, really useful for you as well. And I'll just write at the top here that this is for your paper one mock, okay? Key to this exam, key to all your exams, is knowing and learning your case studies. So I'm going to put this at the top here. Learn your case studies, okay? And we will have a quick look at exactly what those are in uh, this short video. Use those knowledge organisers and use those revision guides that we give you uh, and the GCP revision guides as well. So for tectonic hazards, the key ones that we'll be looking at, uh, key, um, key case studies, uh, Chile and Nepal, okay? And in your... Um, Little revision guides we've given you, we've got the key information for Chile and Nepal. Essentially, it's looking at what is HIC, so Chile, versus LIC, so high income country versus low income country for uh, Nepal and Chile, and how the tectonic hazards impact um, those two places differently. Okay, how does it affect Chile? Well, in Chile, you see a, a greater amount of economic impacts because it's a, an HIC, whereas in Nepal, it's more of a humanitarian impact with. Um, more deaths. Okay, so you can go back and research that yourself. The information's on your knowledge organizer. For weather, uh, we've got a couple of uh, mini kind of case studies. We've got Typhoon Haiyan, which is in the Philippines. Um, we'll have a quick recap, but in primary effects, killed about 6,300 people. And 6 million is a secondary effect, I'll put PS, and then 6 million lost their income. Okay? And that is a secondary effect there. UK, finally, in terms of long term, provided lots of financial aid to uh, help impact. But again, lots of information on your um, knowledge organiser to help um, boost you. Somerset levels floods as well. That we learn about in class uh, levels flooding, which is in 2014, and the impacts of that. This is what's absolutely critical. Impacts of that were 600 homes flooded, 10 million pounds in damages just put mill in damages uh, and lots of contaminated water as well um, or we'll just put water contam okay so so far what you need to be thinking about tectonic hazards Chile and Nepal weather typhoon high and Somerset levels floods in the UK Let's have a jump over just to tropical rainforests. So tropical rainforests and ecosystems, the key thing that you need to think about is deforestation. Uh, in Malaysia. 
which we did in class. Okay, so deforestation in Malaysia occurs for two main reasons. First of all, palm oil, which is in almost every single product that you uh, eat and wash yourself with. Uh, and then there was also the Bakun Dam. So it's a huge dam project as well. And those both had huge, huge impacts on uh, the economy in Malaysia and the environment in Malaysia as well. Also, by virtue, a huge social impact as well. So lots of positives, things like jobs, taxes, gains, negatives, pollution, and reduction in biodiversity as lots of animals and plants are killed. Okay. Final one that you need to think about, cold environments, Svalbard. Okay, this is our key cold environment. And we know lots of things about Svalbard. We drew uh, a little polar bear in class as well. It was pretty handy. But the main thing that you need to remember are some of the positives or the opportunities that exist in Svalbard. Things like fish, tourism, uh, mining, and energy. And some of the challenges, well, there's multiple challenges, but temperature, uh, construction, very difficult to do in Svalbard. So building some of our infrastructure and also daylight, very, very minimal uh, amounts of daylight during important months of the year. Okay. Finally, so coasts and rivers. Okay. There won't be any nine markers on either coasts or rivers, but what you will be asked about are things like management strategies. Okay, and I'm going to put MGMT, who are a famous band from when I was your age, and they're also um, different management strategies on the coast. And you can remember things like the rock armour, uh, seawall, and there's also going to be coastal processes, things like spits. Okay? And how they are deposited. You often have to read a map for that section. Finally, we have rivers. Uh, so lots of the different morphologies of rivers. So meanders, for example, and uh, different types of channels. Remember the levees as well that are formed. So rivers as well, and then some of the river management strategies as well. Okay, so. If I was just to circle uh, these quickly, uh, or just highlight these quickly, what are we going to get? Our potential nine markers aren't. Uh, our potential nine markers are going to be uh, somewhere around uh, tropical, uh, tropical, sorry, tectonic hazards, uh, weather, uh, Svalbard, which is our cold environment, and uh, tropical rainforest, which is basically looking at deforestation in Malaysia. There's lots of really good uh, information online about all of these different things as well um, about these different uh, case studies so essentially you know if you want to bulk up your knowledge and bring in something that no one else is talking about when you think in these exams I think there's about 30,000 students taking the GCSE geography exam you need to stand out from the rest and that's in your case studies a really really good way to do that okay those are all the things that are going to be coming up um, on your exam there'll be a little bit of, of everything in there so it's important to have made sure that you go through all your revision stuff and your knowledge organisers um, to make sure you um, have a really, really successful um, exam. All right, top of that list is learn your case studies off by heart. I often think that by learning case studies, you actually learn, really you learn about the whole topic itself. So it's a really, really good thing to do. Okay. Um, make sure you check out things like my how to answer nine mark questions as well because they're a really, really good guide at um, answering some of the more difficult, longer questions uh, in your exam. All right, any troubles, any questions, come and find me, A181, uh, you know where I am, right up until um, the minute before your exam.